Welcome my friends to another video. Good to have you with me again on the channel. Welcome to my members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel the way you do. If you'd like to become a member, you can hit the join button down below. There are three levels of membership for you to join and support the channel. You can become a consultant, a senior consultant, or a principal consultant member on my channel. And you will get all sorts of different perks and you can help to support the channel to help me grow and uh, bring you more content. Uh, also, please hit that subscribe button, helping me to grow the channel that way as well. That subscribe button means more than you know. When you do that, it helps me to reach a wider audience, get my videos out to more people who can benefit from them. And that does me so much good. You have no idea how much that is. So please hit that subscribe button. Also, so you don't miss a video, hit that notifications bell. So when I put a video on the channel, you're gonna be notified about it right away so you don't miss any of my new content. So, um, and lastly, yeah, give me a thumbs up. If you like my content, please hit that like button as well. That, again, helps me so much. It helps me to move up that YouTube algorithm. It helps me to grow the channel and reach that wider audience so we can help more people and share all the goodness within Microsoft 365. Amazing. So. Today's video, what we're going to be talking about today, it's all about Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. I thought we'd have a little look at what is new within Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. There's three things that were specifically brought out into preview in July. And in this video, we're going to take a little look. Uh, here they come. So what is new in Microsoft Defender for Endpoint? Uh, we're gonna take a look at three things from July 2023 that have recently been released. First of all, we have the eBPF-based sensor for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint on Linux it is available for public preview on all supported Linux devices. We can see more information at this particular link here, which tells us how eBPF works, what some of the prerequisites are if you want to use this, and so on and so forth. So with eBPF, uh, events previously obtained from the audited event provider now flow from the eBPF sensor, which helps with system stability and improving CPU and memory utilization and reduces disk usage. Also, when eBPF is enabled, all audited related custom rules are eliminated, which helps to reduce the possibility of conflicts uh, between applications. So um, I don't know if audited is deliberately spelt that way in the Linux word, or if that's uh, just dreadful um, misspelling on learn.microsoft.com there, but I'm not up with Linux very much. So there you go. But if Linux is relevant to you, have a look at uh, this page. Uh, eBPF sensor now in preview, cool stuff. Next one, what have we got next? We have got, uh, this one's excited a lot of people. Uh, I've seen a lot of buzz about this on social recently. You can now manage endpoint security policies in Defender for Endpoint. Uh, this is now in a public preview. So previously, this is something you could only do from within Intune um, and this is something that people have been wanting for a long time. So uh, manage endpoint security policies and defender for endpoint. You can create an endpoint security policy. You can edit, you can verify these policies all from right within uh, defender for endpoint portal. So how does that look? If we go into the uh, Microsoft 365 Defender portal at security.microsoft.com, you will see if I scroll down now under configuration management here, uh, underneath dashboard, which was always there, I've now got endpoint security policies. No, as this is a preview feature, you'll need to make sure that you have preview features enabled in your settings for the portal here. You can do that at the bottom here under settings and endpoints. And if you scroll right through this list, right down to the bottom, make sure that this preview features is toggled to the on position. Uh, give it a few moments after you've saved the preferences and you should find all the preview features for Defender uh, Portal appearing for you. But this is really cool stuff. If I go into endpoint security policies, I can see Windows policies, Mac policies, Linux policies, and it's telling me here we can't find any Intune policy that matches your query. So let's take a little look in the Intune portal and just uh, see if we have any com 
comparable policies in here. And it appears that we don't in this tenant. So that, that is expectable behavior. So if we go to create a policy within Intune, what do we get? We get uh, this wizard here, which I'm sure we've all been quite familiar with. I'm in to create a Windows policy here. Uh, let's see how that compares in the new experience in Defender for Endpoints. So Windows policies, create a new policy. Let's choose my platform, Windows 10, Windows 11, then Windows Server. Choose a template. I can choose from things like Windows Security Experience, Microsoft Defender Antivirus, uh, Microsoft Defender Antivirus Exclusions, Attack Surface Reduction Rules. So let's pick on uh, Attack Surface Reduction Rules as a uh, as an example here. So we can go ahead and create our policy here and let's just put ASR rules and I've always put a description in, but I won't here because I'm lazy. And here we go. What have we got in the settings? Defender, we've got uh, all of our attack surface reduction rules, options here that we can toggle from on and off. So things like block web shell creation for servers and uh, block executable files from running unless they meet a prevalence age or trusted list criterion. Block all office applications from creating child processes. So we can uh, change these as we need to, um, and we can put them to, uh, uh, we can't seem to get a full view of these options here, which uh, might be just a, a, a newness of, um, of what this is, not, not enabled or not applied, I'm guessing that is, or off block audit or, or worn. So lots of options here. So we could put worn there, for example, on, on this one here, um, and then we can go next. Make sure you've got that uh, selected as you want to in your settings. Then assignments, you can assign via group name. So search by a group name to apply your policy. Um, I'll just skip that right here because I don't want to assign to a group just at the moment and click on save. So that is pretty cool. We've got our policy uh, set up now and we can uh, manage it from here. We can look at our policy setting values right from within the, the newly created policy. Uh, we can look at our policy setting status, apply devices, assign groups, and do all sorts of cool stuff with that there. We can edit this. So, so we can go through the, the setup again and edit it that way also, so that's pretty cool. So endpoint security policies, we should now see one in there for a Windows policy. Does that write back to Intune? I don't know if it will. Let's do a little refresh. Um, I mean, it is a policy as opposed to a configuration profile, but maybe not, maybe not. It is something that you had to do previously in, in Intune, but it's come to Defender for Endpoint now, and uh, that experience just looks way more um, way more appropriate. I mean, it's pr probably not showing it in tune there because of it being an ASR um, rule. I'm conjecturing. <laughs> okay, so what was the last one in what's new for Microsoft Defender for Endpoint? A new file page is now available in Defender for Endpoint, which includes information like file details and file content and capabilities. Uh, so for more information, see Investigate Files. So what is this one all about? We um, can now investigate the details of a file associated with a specific alert, behavior, or event to help determine if the file exhibits malicious activities, identify the attack motivation, or understand the potential scope of a breach. There are many ways to access the detailed profile page of a specific file. For example, you can use the search feature, click on a link from the alert process tree, incident graph, artifact timeline, or select an event listed in the device timeline. Once on the detailed profile page, you can switch between the new and old page layouts by type by toggling new file page. Uh, and the rest of this article describes the newer page layouts. So, um, and what actions can you take on files? You can stop and quarantine, you can manage indicator, download file, ask defender experts, manual actions, go hunt, deep analysis. Um, the file page overview. So what does this look like? Uh, it uh, offers an overview of uh, all the files details and attributes, the incidents and alerts where the file is seen, file names used, number of devices where the file was seen in the last 30 days, including the dates when the file was first seen uh, and last seen in the organization. 
virus total detection ratio, Microsoft Defender antivirus detection, number of cloud apps connected to the file, and the file's prevalence in devices outside the organization. If we just expand that, you can get a view of what that looks like. So within those uh, uh, selections, if you click on that file, you can see all of these options here, which is, which is pretty cool. So lots of great new things in Defender for Endpoint, and I'm sure it will be the last uh, as we go forward uh, for the rest of 2023. And that's it, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button as well if you would be so kind so you can help me to spread the word and reach that wider audience, as I'm always saying. It really does help. But let me know what you thought about this video on new features in Defender for Endpoint. I really like that uh, ability to uh, create those policies right from within uh, the Microsoft 365 Defender portal now. Really cool stuff. The files um, option uh, seems like a really good step in the right direction too. So, and I think things are just going to run and run there. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Defender for Endpoint uh, getting bigger and better all the time. Fantastic. So, um, let me know what you thought in the comments. Uh, reach out to me on social media. I'm on Twitter or X at uh, M365Rising. After a recent spell of being banned on LinkedIn, I'm back on LinkedIn as well. No idea what happened there, but thank you to the good folks uh, who helped me out there and uh, got my profile back. So thank you for that. Um, I will be back with you very soon with another video. Until then, you take care of yourselves. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.